So I'm thinking we could maybe go one by one through the questions here, just so I can like build off of any questions if need be or anything. And you can just ask questions at any point as well, if that's okay. Sure, that's okay. Okie dokie. In that case, I'm just gonna jump right on in. Well, I guess first off, uh, what should I refer to you as? Like, just a uh, cultisty, a uh, different name, any preferred pronouns? Cultisty is fine. I use they them pronouns. Okay, gotcha. And uh, just to make sure I don't mispronounce it at all, how do you pronounce your name? I've been going with uh, cultisty, but I don't, I don't want to be mispronouncing it for the entire video. Aw, oh, it's alright. Any pronunciation is okay. How it's pronounced in Finnish is sort of like cultisty. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Finnish pronunciation on some letters can be pretty weird for an English speaker, because some letters are kind of mixed around. I in Finnish sounds like E. A sounds like I, and E sounds like A. Surprisingly, that doesn't seem too confusing. Well, I'm just gonna hop straight into the game design questions, if you don't mind. Sure. You've been making a whole lot of games for a while now, I presume? I think your first upload to itch.io, at least, was like in 2020? How long have you been making games before then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think my very first upload to Itch was around 2016 or 17, actually. But I'm not that certain which game it was, because unfortunately, Itch doesn't show uploads in chronological order on your dashboard. It might have been one called Don't Use Your Phone Before You Go to Sleep, or one called Soul Thief Fish, which I made for Ludum Dare 40. Neither of those are public anymore, but I have them in a safe. <laughs> Currently, my oldest project is Sea of Bells, which I made for Ludum Dare 42 in 2018, which won third place in the mood category, which was like really, really cool. I'm still very grateful for everyone who played it. But yeah, I've been making games for a bit before starting to upload them to Itch. Maybe I started in 2015 or 16? It was at a local game dev club where I learned to make games together and hosted like four-month-long casual game jams, making all sorts of tiny cool games. Before that, I had drawn mock-ups and doodles on notebook pages, and made some little board games, so it's a bit hard to say when it all started. It has just been going on as long as I can remember. Ah, so was the game dev club where you learned how to make games, or did that come after you already started experimenting? I think it was in that club where I first learned to make digital games, yeah. But before that, I had done some small physical and outdoor ones. The nearby forests were kind of my game engine, and the trees and stones, plants and moss, different objects that could transform into anything with imagination. Oh, I, I think I've watched some YouTube videos of people doing similar things. I was always more of an indoors kid myself, but even with like some Legos, I would make stuff. Are there any games you made out there that still stick with you and maybe like inspire your more recent work? There was one that I wouldn't maybe call a game, but rather a set of stories that I kind of developed and lived through every time I was walking through the woods, or just hanging somewhere by myself. Those still feel really personal and close to my heart, so I don't feel that comfortable about sharing the details about them. But in a nutshell, forest, nature, and creatures who lived there and used magic played an important part. And I feel those stories still influence the world where my games happen and the overall story across them. Oh, and on a side note, I think I started at the club in 2014, rather than 15. My bad. One game, though, that came to mind was also this platformer that I used to draw on the other side of exam papers in school each time I had completed the exam. The game would kind of continue from exam to exam, each paper being a sequel to the previous one, sharing the same characters, but bringing the plot forward. I think those drawings influenced me a bit to start with 2D and pixel art stuff. <laughs> that does sound magical, for sure. Uh, that does kind of lead me into another question I had. I recently played a game of yours called Steptile, and it was the first time I noticed familiar names with the characters. You probably used the names before and I just missed it, but uh, would you say all of the games are connected in some way, or is it more of an easter egg or a reference type thing? Oh right. On Septile you can hear names like Vinter and Eclipse again, first from Planet Tario, and Sulka. 
about the question if the games are connected. At the moment, I prefer not to comment on that. Ooh, getting me a little excited for the next game for sure. Well, uh, speaking of Sulka, I think one of my favorite games you made is probably Sulka. And I guess that's mostly because that's the first game of yours I've stumbled upon from when I was streaming random itch.io games, actually. I know that game was made in 60 hours. I think that's something you do a lot, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, glad to hear you liked it. Thanks for playing. Yes, I think most of my games have been made in two or three days. Nowadays, I tend to spend a bit more time on them, for I want to add all kinds of tiny things here and there until I feel comfortable with the game, which takes quite a lot of time. But the flow state you can achieve on game jams is beautiful. I'm kinda addicted to that feeling when everything just disappears and your hands start to write the code on their own and the game starts to make itself. In 48 hour jams, you enter this hectic trance where you become a gate, a bridge to the will of the world, which through you somehow manages to make something playable become real and materialized within that quite a short time period. And afterwards, you can just fall asleep. I really like that feeling. It brings me back to game jams whenever I have time. Oh, wow. So it kind of comes naturally to you, if I understand correctly, at least for the most part. Kind of, yeah. I feel like that sometimes. I'm definitely going to need some of that skill and power for my own games. With that in mind, I know I personally learned about game design from YouTube tutorials more than anything else. Is the club you mentioned before where you learn most things before going off on your own? Or did you do any other study aside from simply making games? I think the club was like the first kick towards the great ocean of game development. And from there, like you, I went to wander through YouTube videos and also articles and books, playing games and thinking what I found cool about them, and if I could do something similar myself. A bunch of stuff I learned just by making games and trying new things every time I do. Out of all the public games you've made since then, would you happen to have a favorite or two, like one that you really like working on or like uh, your best work? Oh, it's really hard to pick. I'd say one of my favorites is River the Dinosaur and the mysterious portal that ate the entire existence, because working on that was so much fun. <laughs> I love to work on Two Creatures and The Fence of Stones and Plane 2 soundtrack. I think Curse Ball and Underneath are some of my favorites when it comes to the phrasing and flow. Planetario was the first time when I made the menu a bit more than just a menu. Yeah, I think Planetario is one of my faves. <laughs> While I don't fully like some of the stuff I made a long time ago, I still think it's beautiful to see how my younger self made games, and what I've learned since. And the same will probably happen in a couple of years when I look back to the stuff I make now. There are some recent games I also like, like Moo Mafia. For how many levels and things I managed to get there, while the game itself is a bit clumsy. <laughs> also, Skelecool and Lumberjack because of the music and dudes. I think my best game is one that isn't public, unfortunately. I made it in about half an hour, and within it, you press a button to throw a bottle into the air, and it starts spinning. We had a game jam in one cottage on a small island, and one night there, it was just me and one other awake, and they were throwing a bottle into the air trying to spin it around so that it lands perfectly when it hits the ground. The sun was starting to rise, and there was this comfortable quietness occasionally broken by that bottle hitting the ground. I made that game about that moment. It was fun. It's crazy that you can capture those kinds of moments in your games, though. It's something you see in drawings and writings, but something not too often found in video games for sure. On that point though, your games have a lot of different game mechanics, and I believe they're all pretty unique, both in general and also from one another. How do you come up with them? Uh, sometimes those just appear to my mind while I'm walking outside. I might stop and stare at a pattern I see on the street, or a wall, a bird. Sometimes I might get an idea while talking to someone or when I'm almost falling asleep. 
I keep a notebook next to my bed so that I can write everything down whenever I get that feeling. Sometimes I've lost a night's sleep just because I was writing so much. <laughs> I also take a lot of inspiration from other games, mechanics and details I like about them, and turn those into games. For example, I think the base idea for Curse Ball came from my love for saw blade weapons in games where you can just shoot projectiles that bounce around the room. <laughs> I also make my games for myself, too. In a way that I try to make stuff that I'd love to play myself, but isn't real until I make it real. Like, there's this ever-growing game idea world where stuff is just floating around waiting for someone to make it real. I'd love to give as many of those ideas life as I can. Ah, the legendary idea tablet. I used to have one of those myself, but I may have accidentally lost it. Were there any ideas that you remember being difficult to make programming-wise? Oh no. Let's hope that you find it again someday, or that those ideas manifest themselves into a new one. I don't remember there being many of those kinds where I wouldn't have been able to program them. Well. I learn something new with each project and sometimes try to challenge myself to try out new things, where if I'm not able to program something, I'll try to learn to do so. I think most of my problems have actually been with shaders. I think Lonely People Potion Shop might be the only one that uses shaders. Maybe Moo Mafia as well. Really don't remember. <laughs> Shaders still are kind of a mysterious realm to me, and often I find that those just don't work with the web built, at least with the GMS2 version I tend to use. I use quite an old one. Maybe I should update it someday. Each game has had its challenges. There's a couple of ones where I had to build a small back-end system for it, but those never got published. I think more than programming, balancing stuff feels more difficult to me. I've tried to make some 3D games as well, and would love to do some public ones as well in the future, but that's an area where I definitely need more practice. I can definitely relate. I've tried to use shaders once a while back, and I haven't tried again since. I do need to learn it one day, but I can live without it for now at least. You usually use Game Maker Studio 2 for most of your projects though, right? That's the same one I use, but any particular reason you went with that engine? Oh, and cool to hear that you use GMS 2 too. I think originally my love and dislike for GMS started from the Game Development Club. For there we started everything with GMS 1, back when GMS 2 hadn't come out yet. Unity and Unreal felt scarily sterile and too overwhelming, and Godot wasn't a thing yet. There were people using other game development tools as well, but GMS stuck with me, and after I became familiar with it, I just kept using it. I got GMS 2 the very day it came out, and that was quite cool. <laughs> I don't know. I have just used the engine for so long that I don't have to think about certain questions anymore but those kind of questions solve themselves when I start making stuff. I think the same would have happened if I were to use some other engine for all this time. But for me, it was GMS2. I just really like the way it operates, and the speed in which you can get stuff done. Also, the file size and optimization feels really great compared to bigger engines. Also, most of the necessary tools are in the engine, whereas in Unity, I'd have to use Visual Studio or other outer software for code, and one for art, which, at least for me, kind of breaks the flow. One of the biggest downsides is, of course, the lack of proper 3D tools, but that's alright. There's always people like Zick who manage to use GMS as a 3D engine, and that's always really, really cool to see. It's definitely a powerful tool for 2D design though, for sure. I just got it because my dad saw that I liked playing video games and he said I should try making them. He literally just Googled Game Maker and one thing led to another and uh, here we are. 
I personally do want to change over to Godot at one point, but for now I'm good. With that in mind though, have you ever wanted to build one of your games out on a bigger scale? I've had a couple of bigger game projects before, but I don't feel that comfortable when it comes to talking about those anymore. Other than that, I kind of really like these small games. I kind of like making them and the fact that these are a great way to give as many ideas life as I can instead of spending a lifetime on one of them. I usually just try to avoid touching my old games and feel that those are complete as they are, even if there's some problems with them. There are some other, a bit bigger projects though, that I'd love to start at some point. I won't comment on that any further though at least for now. That makes sense. Most of your games feel final and complete on their own, like the perfect amount of content. Excited for whatever you make though, either way. Going back to the storytelling aspect in your games, I did have one other question. Do you already have a story in mind once you think of the core mechanic, or does it sort of come to you as you make the game or anything like that? I think it's a blend of both. Usually with quick game jam projects, the mechanics come first, then the story. Other times, I might take bits and pieces from stories I've written or thought of before and make the games take place in those. Okay, so it's a pretty mixed bag in that regard. Do you have any sort of concrete process when it comes to making a game as a whole? Or is it also a bit of a blend of things? Yeah, it's also a bit of a blend of things. But when it comes to my shorter stuff, there are some methods I usually use. For example, I try to get the core loops or main mechanics down as fast as possible and spend as much time just tweaking and playing around with those until they feel as I want them to, before moving to anything else. The core mechanics being kind of the backbone of everything else that happens in the game. If it just doesn't feel that alright, the whole game kind of just doesn't feel alright either. There's usually a version or a feel in my head that I try to achieve, so sometimes it can take quite a while until I'm happy with it. Oftentimes, I end up tweaking one number variables decimal for almost an hour before I find something that I like. Another thing I almost always do is mock-ups. Before coding anything at all or even opening Game Maker, I usually just draw a sample screenshot from the game what I imagine it would look like in the midst of the game session, or design levels just by drawing them, play around with the colors and placement of things. I often do many separate mock-ups, for example, the menus and other things happening in-game. That way, I can quite easily and quickly do visual design work and see if there's too much noise, etc. I can also already start breaking the game down into objects just by looking at my mock-up making it alive piece by piece and putting all the objects I've created on top of it until I've filled it out. Doing a mock-up really helps the overall flow of my work because that way, I kind of already have a game there when the mock-up is done. I just gotta code it alive. But all the sprites and VFX are there inside the mock-up. I take a lot of inspiration from Adam Pipe's approach to rapid game development. I really recommend checking out their stuff if anyone's interested in making tiny games. From there, I usually just continue it until the game feels done for me. If it's a jam with a strict deadline, I often make the sounds and music last. But if there aren't any hard deadlines, it can vary a lot when I make things. When it comes to the insides of a game, before making levels or other things, I usually start with a tutorial for I feel it's one of the most important things in the whole experience for the player to be able to play the game and understand what's going on. It also helps me figure out the flow of the game, because after I've finished the tutorial, I have a concrete starting point, and I can start building the game, levels, story, and more visuals from there. It's hard to explain, but I really like making the tutorials first. <laughs> it sounds like you have a really solid pipeline. I'll definitely be stealing I mean, borrowing that link to that talk you mentioned. I'm trying to make more small games nowadays in between breaks for my larger project, The Descent. Uh, I guess my next question then is more of a hypothetical. 
If you had like unlimited resources, unlimited time, assuming everything goes perfectly, what kind of game would you want to make? Like what in your opinion would be the ultimate game, no matter how unrealistic? That's a good question. I mean, all of your questions have been really good. <laughs> I think even if I had unlimited time and coffee, I'd still stick to these small games. Maybe just make even more of them. <laughs> I just love small stuff, although I've also had thoughts about some story games I'd love to make someday. Visually minimalistic visual novels like Lena Raid's Escape, or more narrative-focused exploration like in Kentucky Route Zero, where there wouldn't be a lot of gameplay, but instead tons and tons of text and atmosphere. That's something I'd love to try making one day, so maybe that. Nothing too big. I kind of fear very big projects. Maybe that's okay. Yeah, the big projects can definitely be daunting. I kind of like the challenge, but I'd be lying if it said they weren't quite the tough cookie. The last game development question I have is, uh, as a game developer, what would you say your end goal is in making games? Like to spread a message, to fulfill your own creativity? What, what drives it? I think there's a lot of reasons. Some feelings as well that are just a bit hard to explain with words. This kind of flow that tells me that for as long as I'm alive, I should create as much as possible. Bring ideas and stories to this world from somewhere else. I also make games because I want to give them to everyone to play. Explore some thoughts and feelings I have. Expand the world of games existing. Help others get ideas for their own stuff. And if I'm in any way capable of making someone feel better or help them get inspired with my work, that's the best thing I could ever do. I don't know how to explain it. <sighs> I just like making games and, well, stories and feel that's kind of my purpose in life. A solid answer for sure. I can tell you from my own experience with your work, it's definitely inspiring. Now, if you don't mind, I just want to ask a few questions about you as a person. Any favorite creators you have, be it game developers, YouTube creators, or book authors? It's hard to name favorites, for I think every game and art piece overall inspires me in its own way. But I think my biggest inspiration when it comes to overall creative work and creating stuff is Emma Essex. I think with almost every game I've published to itch, I've listened to Emma's music and streams whilst developing them. Not necessarily creator, but creation. I really love Adventure Time and Summer Camp Island too. Those inspire me a ton when it comes to writing and storytelling as a whole. In books, I really liked Terry Pratchett's work on Discworld, Haruki Marukami, and well, there's just so many. I don't want to name a few because it feels like I'm leaving out the rest, but maybe that's okay for now. <laughs> oh, and Nathalie Lawhead. Their work inspired me to start doing glitch art and a bit more experimental photo manipulation, and introduced me to more underground indie games and places. Their stuff gave me so much energy to start creating games of my own. I'm so very thankful for that. All the creators from Frogwell and Devsdorf's Discord channel are also always so inspiring. It's a joy to see what other people are creating. Always nice to have a big bubble of consumption like that, honestly. Even better to have a go-to musician while working. Mine is probably Rustage, who makes music about anime, but that's just my taste. Speaking of which, I don't know if you've watched any of my older videos, but anime is a pretty big thing. Do you happen to watch any anime yourself? Oh, that's sweet to hear that you have an interest like so. I've always been a bit more into Western and independent cartoons. Haven't watched anime that much myself. Though I really liked Cowboy Bebop and Odd Taxi. Could watch those two again someday. Oh, and don't know if it counts, but I also love Ghibli movies. Cowboy Bebop is one that I've heard everyone talking about. I really need to get to watching it, clearly. Uh, another thing kind of synonymous with my channel is hot chocolate, a delicacy of the channel, if you will. That said, I know for some people it's not really a hit. 
Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Oh, I like some hot drinks like coffee, tea, and non-alcoholic glog during the winter. But not hot chocolate isn't quite my thing. Sorry. Hurts my heart to hear, but to each his own. <laughs> I guess the last question is just, would you like to shout anything out? Socials or devs or anything? I got a link to your itch.io in the description, so don't worry about that one. Sorry. I'll defs try it again one day. Ha, <sighs> this was quite fun. It's a bit hard to shout out people, for I just feel like I'm leaving someone out, because there's just so many. Hmm, maybe I'll choose a couple of ones this time. <laughs> okay, a couple of my friends are making stuff on itch too. Recommend checking them out as well. Sapazu makes all kinds of tiny experimental projects with some physical components as well, but I think those aren't on itch yet. Some of my friends are part of a team called Studio Crying Spider that has been making a low-res horror game called Noru Wareta, The Three Treasures, for quite some time now. The build on their itch is pretty old compared to the current one, but they're still developing it and maybe updating the site someday again. And then also Minjutin, who has just started to make games a couple of years ago, but has already made like a lot of jam games and stuff. And I feel they're going to do so much cool things in the future too. Yeah, I'd like to thank you again for letting me have this interview with you. It's been great to talk to you about things and I wish you luck and continued success with your games. That was a lot of valuable information. Not going to lie, I kind of expected them to just kind of give short answers because they'd be busy but they're actually super open as you can see. I even managed to get some inspiration tips for my own game design, and I hope you guys did as well. Thank you all for watching this video, of course. I was actually really excited about it all, and I'm glad I was able to get it out to you guys. I assure you this one took a while to make, from the interview to the recording and especially the editing. Ugh. Uh, thank you again for Cultisty for accepting the interview. Links to their h.io are down in the description. Big thanks to Ivy Grace for voicing Cultisty in the video. I kid you not, this video had a heck of a long script and Ivy Grace just hopped right into it. I don't know how, but they did and, you know, here we are. A uh, link to their YouTube channel is also in the description. Links to pretty much everything else mentioned in the interview are also also in the description. And if you like this video and want more, subscribe, because I do plan on interviewing more uh, creators, not even just game developers, maybe some uh, voice actors, you know, I have connections. <laughs> but yeah, if you want more, subscribe, leave a like, ring the bell for notifications so you never miss a video, and I'll see you guys next time. Nerd on.